Making oil paint dates back to ancient times when people mixed minerals with wax or oil. In the 1400s, they refined the process, discovering that linseed oil was ideal as a pigment binder because it allowed blending and glazing in layers. Hundreds of years later, the colors in those paintings are still vibrant. Today, many oil paint pigments still come from natural sources. The rest are synthetically made. Both types are sold in powdered form to factories that manufacture artistic oil paints. Cuttlefish ink yields brown pigment. Lead produces a specific yellow, and mercury ore a particular red. In the past, pigment also came from stones, tree bark, plant gum, ground-up glass, even arsenic. The company's research laboratory spends about two years developing a color recipe. A chemist mixes specific amounts of linseed oil and pigment in a machine called an automatic muller. It rubs the ingredients together, dispersing the pigment particles throughout the oil. For each sample, he alters the formulation slightly in search of the perfect result. The research team compares the resulting colors and selects the best one. Workers pump the amount of linseed oil specified by that formulation into a mixer. Then they add the precise pigment amount. Most colors are made with just one pigment. The formulation stipulates the precise mixing time and speed. Now they ladle the mixture into a mill. Three dispersion rollers rub the ingredients between them, separating pigment particles and coating them in oil. The recipe specifies how much pressure the rollers apply, how fast they turn, and for how long they work the mixture. Milling can take hours or even days, depending on the pigment texture. The quality control lab takes samples from each batch coming off the mill and subjects them to a series of tests. Technicians scrutinize paint from both sides of the mill to ensure it's processing the mixture evenly. First, a spread test. They place a heavy brass weight on a blob of paint for a prescribed period of time. Then they evaluate the volume of color and measure the distance it spreads. If it doesn't spread far enough, they mill the batch some more. Next, a dispersion test. The markings on this gauge indicate the size of the paint's particles in microns, millionths of a meter. If the particles are too big, the paint needs more milling. Finally, they time how long it takes the paint to dry to the touch. Each color has a specified drying time, ranging from two days to two weeks. The factory produces a labeled chart to display its 120 paint colors. Workers brush each color onto primer-coated paper. When the paint dries, they cut each bar into rectangular swatches called chips. Workers assemble the chart using this mounting machine. The bottom has a section for each color. The top holds a cardboard chart that has information about each color. After loading stacks of chips and coating the chart with glue, it's just a matter of mating the top and bottom of the machine. A chip for each color adheres to its designated spot on the chart. Back on the production line, the factory packages one color at a time in toothpaste-style tubes with a twist cap. Once the labels go on, the tubes make their way to the filling machine. There the tubes are aligned for closure. A nozzle squirts in the paint, then clamps flatten the end shut. A roller folds over the edge to strengthen the seal against squeeze pressure. And these oil paints are finally ready for their brush with frame.